I'm Kenneth Park, uh, consultant surgeon in Aberdeen with a special interest in upper GI diseases. Uh, I've been qualified now for 30 years. Uh, I've been a consultant here in Aberdeen for 20 of those years, having trained in Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Hong Kong with brief trips to the States and Europe for fellowships. As a general surgeon, I do most uh, types of abdominal surgery. I, I am particularly interested in diseases of the stomach, esophagus uh, and upper GI tract and as such I, I do a lot of surgery for reflux disease. By the time a patient comes to see me with reflux disease, they've typically had symptoms for at least a year. Uh, and have tried a lot of other treatments before they decide that surgery is an option for them. Initially, a patient with reflux disease will try to either self-medicate with antacids and alter triggering mechanisms in their lifestyle, such as eating the wrong foods or going to bed after a heavy meal. Uh, after that, typically, they will uh, be prescribed uh, acid reducing medications, most commonly the proton pump inhibitors. The typical symptoms of a patient with reflux uh, are heartburn, so pain behind the sternum here coming up after a meal and causing uh, quite marked discomfort. This can come on when they bend down or as I said after a meal and typically at night when they lie down. Uh, and in addition to this, a lot of patients will get the idea of volume coming back in them and may even have funny tastes in their mouth or water coming into their mouth uh, when they reflux. In addition to patients with the typical symptoms of reflux, we do see an increasing number of patients with atypical symptoms such as hoarseness, chronic cough, sinusitis or even problems with tooth decay. Okay, typically a patient who has failed to respond to medical management will be offered surgery. The traditional surgery is a fundoplication where we wrap the stomach around uh, the lower part of the esophagus or gullet. The idea is to create a, a super competent valve which prevents acid coming back out of the stomach. The trouble is it will also prevent uh, reflux of wind gas and make it impossible for the patient to vomit. Uh, this in turn leads to a number of side effects which many patients find particularly uh, disabling. Uh, gas bloat, uh, inability to vomit uh, and generally feeling discomfort after a meal. One of the big advantages of the Lynx procedure is that it is a more physiological procedure and augments the valve that the patients already have. They are therefore able to uh, belch and even vomit if necessary. The result is that we have an operation that prevents the troubling symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux but doesn't seem to be associated with the same side effects as the traditional surgery. In addition to that, it is relatively a quicker procedure to perform and that of course translates into a, a quicker recovery for the patients. Uh, and additionally, uh, it is a more standardised procedure in that the traditional fund application is very operator dependent. Depending on the tightness of the wrap, uh, there may be different outcomes in terms of side effects, whereas the links is a much more standardised procedure which uh, should give the same results every time. Not all patients are suitable for uh, insertion of the Lynx device. Those patients who have had previous surgery uh, are not indicated at the present moment for Lynx. Uh, similarly, those with a large hiatus hernia, and particularly those with a paraesophageal hernia, are not suitable for Lynx. And at the moment, patients with Barrett's esophagus are considered a contraindication for the insertion of the Lynx device. After the procedure, uh, patients have to be wary that they should not undergo an MRI scan, um, partly because uh, the images that they will get will be uh, corrupted by the device. Uh, and in addition, there is concern that uh, the heavy or strong magnetic field in the MRI machine may damage the device. 
The Lynx procedure is uh, inserted under a general anaesthetic and using laparoscopic or keyhole surgery. Uh, the abdomen is first of all inflated with uh, carbon dioxide uh, and then uh, ports are inserted to allow instruments uh, to manipulate the gastroesophageal junction uh, where the valve between the stomach and the esophagus uh, sits. Uh, we make an attempt to do minimal dissection uh, to identify this junction uh, and preserve the important vagus nerves which are, uh, control the motility of the stomach uh, after the operation. Uh, the device is inserted after measuring the size of the gullet uh, and it is inserted as a string of beads which are then fastened around the gastroesophageal junction. The experience of the patients is generally extremely good. Uh, the first patient that I inserted the device in uh, complained bitterly beforehand that she couldn't uh, drink orange juice, which uh, was something she enjoyed and is now able to drink as much orange juice as she likes. She is absolutely delighted at the relief of her reflux symptoms and has no side effects. The second lady uh, had a chronic cough. Uh, this seems to be gradually reducing, but as is the experience with um, conventional surgery, uh, the cough usually does take several months to uh, resolve uh, afterwards. This patient's uh, complaining of less reflux symptoms and uh, it's quite interesting that family members are noting that her cough has improved quite dramatically. I think uh, there is always a concern with any implantable device uh, and many of us remember uh, the angel chick procedure many years ago uh, which was a silicon band inserted around the gastroesophageal junction. Many of these eroded and caused major problems. I think though that many of the concerns that we've had uh, with devices such as Angel Chick have been negated by the thorough and extensive investigation that has been done with the Lynx procedure uh, and it appears to have an excellent safety profile.